Hello everyone, I am Cassandra from the team of the 20th edition of In the Palace International Short Film Festival. Today I have the pleasure of introducing you to Cathy Kiesel, who is the screenwriter of the film Taste of Home, directed by Anivo, and who is taking part in the student competition in the category Fiction. This is the story of Mai, a Vietnamese 17 years old girl who was trafficked to Germany. She becomes friends with Lin, an 11 year old girl whose family is part of an organization who holds May captive and asks her to help her escape. Before starting the conversation, let's watch the trailer. Hello, Cathy. Hi. Uh, thanks, uh, first of all, for being here. And we also send a virtual hug to Annie, who didn't have the possibility of being here. And uh, so, first of all, I want to ask you, what was the writing process in the creation of uh, this film? How did you work together with Annie in, uh, for, uh, for this, this uh, story? Mm -hmm. So first of all, thank you so much for having us. Uh, Annie is sending all her love. Like, unfortunately, as you said, she can't be here uh, this morning. But uh, our writing process was actually really lovely. Uh, I think we worked really well as a team. And we started working on the script in 2020 during the pandemic. So actually, most uh, of the writing uh, process we did over Zoom. Um, and like, I think we just, we just talked a lot, uh, a lot about the characters at first. We did, obviously, a broad research, which uh, was really important to us. And uh, we talked about the characters, like every, every single character has uh, a big story that we try to put together into a 30-minute film. Um, and I think it took us, I think we talked about the characters for like three to four months at first, before starting to plot. Um, and before we started uh, writing together, we um, actually talked about every single scene, what is the feeling that we wanted, uh, that we want to tell. Uh, we even talked about the, di uh, the dialogue, and usually then I, uh, I uh, started writing the first draft, and uh, then Annie um, took over, and she uh, wrote over the script, and then we met up again, and we uh, talked again about the uh, about the script, so on and so on. So uh, it took uh, took us quite some wi uh, a while, and um, after a few drafts, uh, actually we found our two producers, uh, Max and Toby, um, who also really helped us uh, by giving feedback. And all in all, I think it was a really good experience, and I felt really respected as a writer because sometimes it can be difficult to uh, to work on a script together. But I think this process really worked for us. Yeah, in fact, uh, one of the main strengths of this film is uh, the arc of the character, the arc that uh, they follow. And one of the most interesting things is the fact that uh, even if the topic is uh, huge and very important, which is uh, human trafficking, uh, the main point of view is uh, the one of the child. Mm -hmm. So why did you choose this? Mm -hmm. 
So thank you so much for noticing, um, because um, yes, human trafficking is um, a topic in the movie, but we always said we want to make a, a film about a friendship, about uh, a friendship between two girls. And um, so we actually it took us quite some time to find the perspective um, of the movie because the uh, system of human trafficking is so complex and um, even though we did a huge, re huge research, we just really had to think about, okay, which one is the character that is most interesting to us, um, who, is, who helps us to tell the story. And although Mai is the, the, the taller girl, the, the bigger girl, um, although she's the one that drives the plot forward, um, we decided on Lynn because Lynn um, gets in it's, it's the first time for her she gets in touch with, uh, with, such a, with the topic of human trafficking. And we felt like she can represent us as filmmakers, but also um, represents the audience who probably um, get in touch with uh, the topic of tr human trafficking uh, f uh, for the first time as well. So we decided on her because we can see the system through her eyes and she, um, she asks the questions um, that we want to ask as the audience. So um, that's why we decided on her and um, because it's also a film about uh, becoming an adult and uh, growing up. Yeah, in fact, uh, she goes uh, through um, important changes, not, not only um, detaching herself from her family and making her own choice, but also in the first part we see that uh, she has got uh, her uh, first period mm. like uh, as a symbol of this uh, growth and this, uh, this final becoming an adult. Yeah. That's why. Yeah, true. That's, uh, actually, we were, we were talking a lot about symbols um, in the movie and uh, her getting her period is one of them. So, yeah. yeah. And uh, why exactly you decided to represent the symbol about symbol? The symbol of home in this case is the mooncake. Why exactly this? Mm -hmm. So um, the mooncake is actually a symbol for the connection between uh, the two girls, um, because food has the power not only to transport like a taste, but also food can transport a feeling, a memory, and it connect and it can connect people no matter if they know each other or not. And actually, um, the question, have you eaten yet? And um, like the act of um, sharing food um, is, like, is, is an act of caring for each other, of love, and it's a huge part of uh, Vietnamese culture. So um, we kind of felt like this could suit the, uh, the film uh, really well um, because Lynn and Mai sharing the mooncake just shows us in a really subtle way the act of caring and uh, the love that they have for each other. And uh, also, Simo, I'm also passionate about screenwriting and you are the first screenwriter I'm interviewing here. Uh, why you decided to, to pursue this path? Like the uh, screenwriting path? Screen in yeah. general, that's a good question. Um, I, I just, I started writing like it's like, I started like writing when I was a little uh, child. I wrote in my diaries. I feel like it's a way I can express myself um, better, like in writing than <laughs> speaking. So um, yeah, that's actually uh, that's actually I think a huge uh, hu a huge part of it. And um, I just I just like to create emotions. Um, this always sounds a little bit uh, mean, but I. I like to make people cry. This is like my main goal. I want to touch people. Um, you did it with this film. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, yeah, so that's actually, um, I think, the reason, like, to share emotions, to share, like, worlds, different perspectives. Are you working already on uh, another project? Um, right now I'm working on a feature-length comedy um, with a production company in Germany. Um, I just graduated uh, this year from uh, film school. And uh, yeah, I hope uh, Ani still has to do her uh, graduating, uh, uh, her graduate film. So um, I hope we will work on that together as well. And yeah, that would be lovely. Okay. Do we have any questions from the audience? No? Okay. Well, thanks a lot for this uh, interesting conversation. And also, we send another, another time big love to Ani. And good luck to, for all your projects. Thank you so much. Thank you for having us.
Hello everyone, I'm Cassandra from the team of the 20th edition of In the Palace International Short Film Festival. Today I'm here with uh, Miles Davis Murphy, director from uh, Ireland, who is here to, talking about, to talk about uh, his film uh, Bestial Ones, who's taking part in the student competition in the category Fiction. This is the story of a young punk single mother uh, who misses her independence and when all of a sudden uh, an old acquaintance returns, she has to choose between her son uh, and leaving everything behind. Before starting, let's watch the trailer. No, sorry. <laughs> no trailer. No trailer. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Not now. Um, so, thanks first for being here. Thanks for having and, me. Um, uh, one thing that you said is that uh, your story are mainly uh, character driven. Can you tell us more about this and how you put this, uh, this um, way of seeing a film in uh, this film in particular? Um, well, this film kind of came about, uh, it's, there was a, a lot of different things and themes that I wanted to explore that, uh, from my own life. Um, like primarily, I kind of made this for my mother because I was very much a, a, a troubled child. I was very uh, misbehaved a lot. So she had to deal with that. And I also, when I was uh, 15, I had a son myself, and we decided to give him up for adoption. Um, but that is still something that I kind of uh, grapple with and still kind of think about. So I wanted to kind of explore the theme of, of parenthood and how that would conflict with, I guess, um, Maybe you're feeling it's a loss of independence or, or those kind of things, so, yeah. Yeah, about parenthood, here we have uh, two different examples because we have, of course, the main characters, but it is also the grandfather of the, of the child, which is uh, the father of the main character, let's yeah. say. And um, how did you, um, how did you uh, work in the relationship between these characters? Um, with the actors? Yeah. Um, that was actually, I'd say working with actors is probably um, one of my favorite parts of filmmaking. I would uh, very much consider myself an actor's director. And um, so we d I don't necessarily rehearse so much, but rather um, sit down, we sit in a circle or, 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 or on couches, whatever, and uh, we just talk about the characters and we talk about their backstories. And, you know, I, I say, like, I have mine, my ideas of what the history of these families and these people is. and they might have theirs and it doesn't matter as long as we kind of reach, you know, the same kind of goal. And so, yeah, I, I kind of, I like, you know, very early on, I was like, here's my phone number, you can call me or text me anytime, which ended up, you know, the lead actor, Michelle, um, who unfortunately was going to attend, but she couldn't make it. Like, we were pretty much talking to each other constantly every single day. Like, she'd be like, oh, I was thinking like maybe, you know, this happened to me. And I was like, that's great, yeah, you know? But it's like, none of that stuff makes it onto the screen. It's all about, because what we're doing with, with, with cinema and, and films is we're, we're creating, hopefully, real people and worlds. And so if you, if you don't believe it, then it's not going to be believable, I suppose. So, yeah. And about directing, we also know that uh, sometimes when directors say that one of the most difficult things is directing a child. And here we have, uh, as well, a little kid. So how did you approach that? Um, it was... Not my first time. The, f the film I made previous to this had um, a, a six-year-old and um, Huey, and this was eight. But, ch I mean, children, they're people, and everyone's different, and some approaches don't work with others. So it, 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 the most thing was just trying to make it a, a game and make it fun for him, which was, this is not a, a fun story. So <laughs> it was definitely kind of, it was a lot of, like, one of the things, that, and then you try something that works once, and then it doesn't work again, because they're smart, they're clever. So, you know, they'd be like, just trying to make things into a game. Like, I, you know, if we're shooting a close-up on him and we can't see what he's looking at, you know, have his eye line be on a wall. And I was like, Could you, uh, so we're going to go for this take. And then after that, I want you to tell me how many uh, cracks you see on that wall. Like, little things like that. And it works, and you get a beautiful take. And then you go for the next one, and you try to do it again. And he's like, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> so... Um, yeah, I enjoy it. I, I actually, I don't, I think when people say they shouldn't work with, with uh, animals or children, I think that, that you're really limiting yourself because I think they're, it's, they're wonderful. Like, you, you know, they can do so much. So, um, but I also definitely need to take a break from that. <laughs> 
And also, is there any specific reason why the main character is a punk? Yeah, I, um, I very much, uh, I grew up in the punk scene and I st it's still very much a part of my life. And I kind of always wanted to set a world, uh, set a story within that world. But, so there actually, that kind of, that scene played a, a little bit in the earlier drafts, played a little bit m m a bigger role. But I it slowly stripped away because that's not, the story is about a family, it's about relationships. And um, so I just, but I just I think it was an interesting setting. So, yeah. Did you have any visual reference in mind while uh, shooting this film? Um, yeah, I'm a, I'm a big fan of poetic realism, like Andrea Arnold's films or like Shane Meadows' films, you know. So that kind of the British social realism, that definitely uh, played a big, big part in how we kind of approached filming this. Um, I kind of, yeah, Mike Lee as well, like all of them, so. Um, can you tell us something about uh, filmmaking uh, in, uh, in Ireland specifically? Ireland has an amazing film industry um, and it's, it's continuing to grow every day. Like the, there's a lot of um, support from, from the government and it's a great place to be. So I, I encourage anybody to try and go for co-productions with there. It's a great place. But uh, obviously the biggest thing that issue that we have is, is the weather. It does not cooperate with us. <laughs> um, but yeah, I suppose, I think there's this, you know, because there's cities and you, then you also have beautiful countrysides and you have the seaside. There's so many, you know, you can basically tell any story there that you want to. So it's, it's I, 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 I love filming there. Yeah. Are you working to some uh, projects already? I am. Well, so this film is kind of just, um, just, it's kind of just beginning its festival journey. So we, um, we're going to the Young Director Awards in the Cannes Lions next week. And then a few other things at the moment. But uh, I, I've just finished my next script that I'll be pitching for funding in September. And so hopefully I'm successful and hopefully uh, I can come back here again because I think this is this is a great festival and thank you all so much for thank having you. me. Yeah, okay. And, um, in, uh, usually in your filmmaking, are there any recording topic? For example, here of course we talk about parenthood and family. Is this uh, this will be a recording topic or uh, are there many other that you want to explore? Um, well, I'm, I'm also currently developing. Um, I just I, 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 dramas are always going to be probably what I focus on. I like, you know, I like making people feel things, whether, you know, I have no control over what they feel, but uh, I, <laughs> I like to make them feel things. So, but family kind of plays a part in everything that I've done so far. The, the one that I'm uh, just finished is also actually involves a child as well. Um, but I, the feature that I'm developing would be a drama, but it also leans a little bit more into genre as well. Like it'd be a little bit of a thriller kind of Safety Brothers-esque, so. Okay. Do we have any questions from the audience? No. Okay, thanks a lot Thank for so this much. conversation, yeah. and of course, good luck for your pitching in uh, September. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, the film is screening today at three, if anyone would like to see it. Oh yeah, of course, <laughs> don't lose it, don't miss it. <laughs> Thank you. I'm here with uh, David Osh, a uh, film director from uh, Switzerland, who is here to talk about uh, his film, Lonely Fans. 
taking part in the student competition category fiction. Uh, this is the story of uh, Laurent, Laurent, he's pronounced like that, and uh, his uh, weird fetishism for fans. And uh, let's watch the trailer. Hello, David. Uh, thanks for, uh, first of all, thank you for being here and joining this thanks festival. Thanks for having us. We're, I'm traveling the country with my girlfriend since seven days or even oh, more. Really? And it's so beautiful. Like oh, We've great. been at the sea uh, in Varga. And Varna, yeah, it's Varna, very and it's, it's a really beautiful country. Can't wait to explore more. It's a nice opportunity to, to explore. <laughs> yes, also yeah. Plovdiv, uh, now Sofia. It's so nice. I love it's it. It's good to know. Thank you. And so, in my information, I have this, uh, this film was uh, co-written with uh, Sandra Moser, right? Yes. Yes, and uh, can you tell me more about uh, the writing process of this film and how did you work together? So, the writing process of this film has been uh, very unique, as we've been a group, a bunch of people, as my producer, Levin Viet, um, my uh, editor, Ricarda Schwartz, and our DOP, uh, Gaito Nicolas. We were kind of, we started our master's stu studies at uh, Zurich University of Arts. And so we got all um, together in a group and had to invent a movie together. So it was kind of a collaborative process. And Sandra Moser, who's a very experienced actress, started to write the screenplay and we all gave her inputs. So uh, our uh, DOP, for example, he was like, oh, I know this one actor. Uh, we're kind of friends. We always eat pizzas together. and." Uh, we once did a little movie, we tried something out, and then he just started licking fans. And it was kind of amazing what he did. And so she was like, okay, let's go with the fans. David, what do you think about fans? I was like, I, I don't know. I like wind turbines. They are kind of huge fans. So she kind of constructed this narrative out of a lot of people's minds. And I think the movie got very messy, to be honest. But sometimes messy is beautiful, you know? Like, it has a lot of different minds and a lot of different hearts in it, and we also developed it in uh, 2020, no, 21, um, 2020, and um, we said, the world is so dark right now, let's do something upbeat and something very romantic. I don't know if it's really romantic, but that was... In a certain sense. Y you, have, you have to be the judge, yes. <laughs> but it was the goal, at least, to make a romantic movie about uh, fans, about wind turbines, about passion, about love and uh, energies, like chemistry, in that very weird place in Switzerland. So, um, uh, yeah, of course the idea was uh, unique and uh, it came out just from uh, this scene that you saw from uh, a guy licking a, a fan. Yeah, more or less, yes. That was uh, really funny. And uh, also, did you have any visual references in mind? Because, uh, of course, some of the scenes, especially towards the end, are very almost oniric. <laughs> For example, when there are the scenes of the character that start uh, spinning, spinning like a fan, and it's, like, it's, uh, it's crazy in a, in, a very, in a very good way. And um, in a certain sense, it reminded me, even if this film was written before, some of the scenes of uh, the, um, the last movie, uh, Everything Everywhere all, to, all at Once, the kind of mood was um, pretty much the same, and I was wondering if you had any visual references in mind about uh, some, um, some scenes? Uh, it, it's funny that you mention it, because I'm, I've been a huge fan of Daniels before. <laughs> they, they were YouTubers, and that's how I... Uh, I mean, I love them. I think the reference on this one was... Uh, I love Paul Thomas Anderson, and I love his more smaller movies, like Punch Drunk Love was a reference, 
we, we said, let's just, I think I have to give praise to the DOP, Gator Nicolas. He was really inventive. He was like, let's just throw everything in this movie. Like, let's not make a too strict concept. And then he was like, I will invent a machine and it will turn around the actors. And I was like, just go, just go for it. Like on this movie, I did a lot of more formal films before, a bit less silly, a bit less comedic. And on this one, I was like, let's just throw everything, every style together and just see what happens. And I think Ricarda Schwartz, the ed editor, she just edited it together beautifully so that kind of all these different styles and twists and turns and camera movements work together. Sometimes in a set there are also, it, it can happen that there are like uh, conflicts or like uh, different uh, views or ideas, but I, I think in this case, even if it happened, probably it turned out to be something, something beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> it, it, was, it was very messy to shoot. I mean, like it was a lot of different ideas and, and conflicts. It was not all sunshine, but in the end, I really loved the product because I think sometimes it's beautiful to have one vision and on this movie, I think it has something that it has these many beating hearts in it and it kind of lifts, you're a bit confused. Sometimes maybe you don't know really where it's going, but that can also lead to some tension. And how did you work in uh, directing the actors? Of course, I imagine that uh, it, it, maybe it was uh, weird telling um, an actor to... How can you put an actor in that, uh, in that, uh, in that role? Like, um... <laughs> so, um, with... Maria, Sauter, Maria Rebecca Sauter, it was easy because she has kind of that punk attitude. She's playing the female lead. And uh, with Casey Mote Klein, he's kind of a really amazing actor. And if he goes for something, he completely disappears in it. And so he was uh, almost more focused on his objects than on the other actors. He was like touching them also between the takes and telling me all the weirdest things you, you don't even want to know. <laughs> he was deep into the role. <laughs> uh, he, was, he really loved playing the role. And um, he was, uh, he's such a character in real life that uh, I think it was a bit hard for everyone to shoot because we were out a lot like in the snow. So there were funny instances where he was like, I don't think my character wears a jacket. He just loves the wind so much, so we're shooting in the snowstorm for like 10 minutes, and he's like, you know what, I think my character loves jackets. So. Pure metal doctor. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was, it was a very messy shoot. It was, uh, there were a lot of uh, very, I mean, you see a little bit of it in the movie, and we were happy when we could shoot inside because the matter, weather was really messy, yeah. but it suited the movie quite well. Okay. And are you working at something else right now? Um, I'm working at my other, like my uh, graduation movie, which will be another short about, uh, it's about scientists in a glacier, very Swiss, but like, I think they will, they will release some toxins out of the glacier, uh, frost and uh, discover something. And then I'm also uh, working on my first feature with uh, Hugo Film, it's a production company in Switzerland and uh, there I wrote the script, and now we're obviously waiting for funding. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, do we have questions? Okay, thanks a lot for joining us, and of course, uh, good luck for all your next career. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having me.
Okay. Hello everyone, I'm Cassandra from the team of the 20th edition of International Short Film Festival in the Palace. I'm here uh, with uh, Michal Bohm, who was uh, the editor of the film Vinland, uh, taking part in the student competition category Fiction. Uh, this is the story of Daniel, uh, a man who leaves his family for a seasonal job in Prague, but while there he becomes victim of, orga or an, orga of an organization that uh, takes advantage of the work of illegal immigrants. Uh, before starting, let's watch the trailer. Ваши паспорта останутся у меня, как в отеле. Ну, а ты не думаешь, что хочешь улица? Эй, можешь говорить? Мобильный тоже. Чего я вообще так недалеко? Что-то не нравится? Может приходить сразу? Где ты? Кто ты? И сюрпризом не будет, если я вам не заплачу за последний месяц. О, баба. Что это ты ему помог, а? Хочется возвращаться. Или просто некуда. Я тебе надоела. Бегу сюда! Бегу все, я сказал быстрее! Hi, Michal. Thank Hi. you for uh, joining this Q&A, first of all. Thank you for having me. Oh, it's a pleasure. Mm -hmm. And so, um, uh, first of all, I'd like to ask you, how was uh, working together with um, the director, Martin Kuba, in this realization of this film? Well, it was great, but it was a lot kind of uh, demanding because he's a, he's a real perfectionist. And it took us, I think, almost a year to edit the whole thing. And um, we were, they, they shot the movie in, uh, in four phases. And uh, like it was, it was not just the editing process was complicated, but also the, the whole shooting thing. I sometimes compare it to like when Terry Gilliam tried to make his Don Quixote, because like everything could go wrong, like just went wrong. And uh, the four phases was because of uh, the COVID. The COVID started and it was at the time when he wanted to start shooting the movie. So in the first phase, he uh, shot everything at the dormitory where the workers live or stay. And uh, because they couldn't get the, the, the main antagonist, the Sergei Borisov actor from Russia to here. Uh, and for, for example, uh, he got, for the first time, he couldn't arrive because of the pandemia. Uh, and the second time, he uh, was stopped at the airport because they've mistaken him with some other Russian, some wanted criminal, who had the same name and the same date of birth. So, yeah, so he missed the, like, it sorted out, but he couldn't make the plane. So they also had to postpone the second phase of the shooting. Uh, and the second phase, it was like the scenes with, with Sergei. So uh, that's it. And then there was the f f third and fourth phase uh, when they were shooting the, the, the dreamlike sequence in the, in the sea. Like the, the, the movie was basically done, but uh, he always he had this 
idea from the beginning that he wanted to add some like more metaphorical layer to the social realism and uh, so as i as i said before he's really perfectionist and when he has some some uh, something he wants he just does everything to get it so he wanted to do it so he traveled with uh Vahu Khachanice, that's the that's the actor who plays daniel uh, and they went to the on the northern Poland to the Baltic Sea to shoot it there, but because uh, Daniel is uh, or Vajo is Georgian and the sea was too cold for him, so he was afraid of having a heart attack, so he refused to get in the water. So they got back and they only had shots like of, of the of the tides, and then they uh, that was the third phase, and in the fourth phase they went to to Georgia, where where he like had no problem to get into the water. Yeah. And so these were all the difficulties that you had uh, to face uh, uh, in the shooting, and, uh, but you also said that also the editing part was pretty long, and uh, what was the main challenge in that? Yeah, well, uh, it was that like in, in each phase he wanted to uh, have the film like uh, as a whole working somehow, so we, we were like re-editing it after every phase, he also, he was, it was a graduation movie and he, he showed it to his teachers, the, 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 just what, he, what we shot in the first phase. So it was just happening on the dormitory, but, but they kind of like it, even though there wasn't like the, the story at all. And uh, some other difficulties were, basically we have two versions of the movie. And we, we struggled a lot uh, because he wanted to cut it under 30 minutes, so it, uh, it gets to almost all the short film festivals. But uh, the, the narrative or, or the story, I think it had uh, like more narrative potential to make, a, to make a feature, so we were struggling to how to tell the story in, in such a short, uh, on, so, on such a short scale. Yeah, so, so there are basically two versions of the movie, like one is uh, under 30 minutes for the festivals who don't accept uh, movies longer, uh, but, and there is also a longer version, 35 minute version, mm -hmm. with some... The extended edition, and maybe we can see it <laughs> in uh, some other festival. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but I, I think, I personally think I've seen it, uh, like both of the versions, uh, I haven't seen them for a while, and then I watched them, and I think the, the shorter version is actually better. It's more like compact and, and yeah, it, it has better rhythm. Okay. And you personally, how did you decide to, uh, to pursue uh, the career path as an editor? Oh, well, <laughs> I wanted to do films and I, I didn't see myself as a director or a cinematographer and I wanted to like uh, learn how the, how the film works like from the inside. And I think like uh, being editor is the best way to, to understand the film language and, and the storytelling. So that's why I chose editing. Yeah. Are you working on something else right now? Yes, I'm working on a documentary uh, with my friend. It's about the how to add a price to some uh, art uh, stuff like how, how it's it's called is it worth it and it's it's about like uh, the money and the like the, the financial side of of the of the art process yeah, yeah and um, how, how it is in uh, in the um, uh, at what point it's uh, this project we're going to start editing like in a in few months, yeah. So maybe next year? Yeah, but I'm afraid it's, it's going to be a feature film. Yeah. <laughs> okay. This way it was supposed to be longer, so. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Do we have questions? No? Okay, thanks a lot for uh, joining this conversation and good luck for this uh, next project. Thank you.
Hello everyone, I'm Cassandra from the team of the 20th edition of In the Palace International Short Film Festival. I'm glad of introducing you to Eduardo Livelli and Luca Ferrara, director and producer of the film The Look, uh, taking part in the student competition category Fiction. This is the story of uh, Clive, a young man full of insecurity who, uh, during a solo trip in uh, Costani, Tuscany, he receives an invitation for a special experience in a hotel where he's staying. Uh, before starting, let's watch the trailer. Um, I found this in, in, in my room, um, and it says I'm invited for a, a, a massage. I don't know. There's only one rule. Silencio. You're having the time of your life, Clive. I bet. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Hi, hello Eduardo, hello Luca, thank Hi. you for joining this Q&A. Thank you, thank for, you for having us. It's a pleasure. <laughs> so first of all, I'd like to ask you, what is the idea come from? Well, mm -hmm. that's, that's a hard question to, uh, to answer to. I, I guess um, feeling of loneliness and uh, as all the ideas, you know, that... Uh, I mean, as every creating process starts from something that uh, really... Uh, like a big pain in your chest, and so this was a way to address a theme that uh, it, this it has always been present in most of my, uh, you know, uh, teenage years. Yeah. And uh, is there a particular reason why the character of Clive is um, is a foreign tourist? Well, this was my graduation film from uh, the uh, London Film School, and I really really wanted to do. Um, complete mix uh, between my experience uh, in London, in the UK, and uh, my roots, Italian roots. So this was just a nice uh, way of mixing uh, different parts of my life and uh, make it all in one. Yeah, because you are originally from Tuscany as well, right? Yes, I'm from Florence. From Florence. Yeah, you know, if you are uh, from uh, Florence and they ask you this, this question uh, in, uh, in Italy, and you are, are you from Tuscany? You're like, no, I'm not from Tuscany, I'm from Florence. It can be complicated in yeah, Tuscany, yeah. <laughs> yes, it's true. <laughs> but yeah. where, where are you from, by the way? I'm not from Tuscany. Oh, but I'm sorry, man. Yeah. But at the yeah. time, I was actively working as a producer in Tuscany, which okay. is one of the mm. reasons why I got involved in the project. It would have been fun if you were from uh, Pisa and Livorno or something. No, <laughs> oh, well, that would have been worse, in a way. You know? Oh, my God. No. Not Pisa, not, not Pisa. Pisa, not Pisa. No, no. And so, uh, what were the main challenges doing this film from a directing point of view and producing point of view? You can start. Should I go first? Um, so when Edo first presented me with the script, it was quite a lengthy one, over 20 pages, uh, and it was almost in its final uh, stage of development, so almost ready to be taken into production. We expected, and we in fact did, quite a lengthy uh, shooting period. Uh, we shot this film over nine days, eight of which were shooting days and one of which was a rest day. Uh, so, you know, a prolonged shooting period comes with additional costs, additional logistics challenges, accommodation, catering, all of the things that you normally have to account for on a short films were just multiplied in the case of this one. But there wouldn't have been a way to shoot this film in less time, I guess. Yeah. So this was the main challenge for me. Yeah. For you? Well, from a directing... Uh, point of view, uh, you know, uh, for who watched the film, there are some quite intense scenes, you know, with very, very delicate, with uh, kind of, you know, uh, sexual content, even if it's not sex. And so it was the first time shooting something, something like that. Uh, in, in Italy, we don't have... Uh, um, uh, how do you say, uh, um, those figures that... Uh, yeah, we don't have an intimacy exactly, coordinator. Intimacy coordinators. Yeah. 
And so that made uh, those scenes really a huge challenge, you know, to make everyone comfortable, not just the actors, but even the crew, and to make it, uh, to make it sure that, uh, you know, everything yes. was under control and done in the right way. Yeah. yeah. And also the location where it was shot, they were great. So how did you find them? How did you yeah, work so on that? that? That was an interesting catch because also the, the deal that we made with the location was that we were going to shoot the film in the location, but we were also going to sleep in the location and eat in the location. Nice. So, yeah. You liked that? I did. I enjoyed it yeah. very much. And the actors did too. So we were all pretty much living together. And at the end of the shooting days, we'd have dinner together and, and keep talking and keep discussing. Uh, so like the, the cultural differences and the language differences that you can see in the film were actually a real thing in the wider context of the production, which is something that was pretty funny and that we enjoyed. Also seeing the actors have dinner together and, and talk about each other's uh, country and cultures is something that really was uh, funny and, and interesting. And I guess it helped them get into character for all of the, the shooting days that they were going to do. Yeah. yeah. And uh, how would you, would you explain the epilogue of the film from uh, Clive's point of view? You mean, you want to know what does that uh, last look actually yeah, exactly. means? So exactly. The mean of the look, which is also the title of the film. Well, um, I don't know if I want to tell you. It's, it's up to you. It's really up to the, to the audience uh, interpretation. Let's say that uh, uh, it's up to you if uh, you, you really want to interpret that ending scene as if uh, he thinks that he has really missed an opportunity to, you know, just enjoy a part of life, or maybe that wasn't really an opportunity to catch. And at the end of the day, it's better, you know, for him that he didn't. didn't. I mean, I'm, I don't want to spoil the film, but uh, <laughs> actually, that's what I'm doing. Yes. So, okay, I will <laughs> shut up. But we have screened it yesterday. Some, yeah. some people might okay. have seen it already. I know, I know. So it's I not know. a spoiler anymore. No, you I can know, say whatever know. you like. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, uh, yeah, uh, you also, of course, you lived in, uh, in England as well. So mm. how would you, exp um, how do you see the difference between uh, England and uh, Italy from a filmmaker point of view? Well, uh, uh, it's, uh, it's hard to give a polite answer, but, uh, <laughs> well, um, I don't want to also generalize. And uh, I'm not experienced enough to give you, like, a proper answer. But uh, from what I saw, um, I guess uh, in, in England uh, there is much more, uh, I don't know, I, I, my experience was much more less relaxed. I know it's, uh, that's yes. absurd because everyone is so... Um, like focus that you don't, you can even, you know, take a time to yes. make a joke and make <laughs> everybody feel comfortable. Everybody is very focused. Too professional, too yes. professional. No, I'm joking. Yeah, <laughs> it's their job. But in Italy, I felt much more of, you know, a relaxed uh, yes. situation. But, but from my point of view, because I studied in the UK too, but I'm now actively working as a producer in Italy, I often find myself having to take on multiple projects at the same time and develop them creatively and develop them financially because independent cinema all over Europe, but in Italy especially, is actually very much dependent on public funding, much more than, than the opportunities for private funding are. So uh, basically my job as a producer is to apply to as many funding opportunities as I can and just wait till I hear back from them. And basically those decisions sadly made by other people, often influence whether a film gets made at all or not. Is there actually space for, uh, for so many projects? In my own life or in my own time? I mean, for, uh, <laughs> with the, fund, the funds yeah, are limited. No, there, I there's mean. not enough money and not enough room for every project, and that's why a lot of good projects do not get made or have a harder time than they should getting made. And uh, you talk about other projects, but what, what are you working on right yeah, now? Yes, so I am developing three short films, all of which I hope will get made uh, this year. Uh, one of them I'm going to be directing, the other two I'm going to be uh, producing. And, and all of these films are going to be shot in Italy by the end of the year, I hope. Is this uh, going to be your first uh, time as a director? Uh, no, I have directed films in the past, even though I am shifting towards producing as my main focus because I enjoy doing that. And I find that to be a necessary part of my directing too because getting to know the struggles that producers have to go through in Italy to get a film financed and made made me a more conscious and, and respectful uh, and realistic thinking director. Yeah. And 
What about you? What are you working at right now? Yeah, I'm working on a new short film that I actually pitched here uh, yesterday. And so, you know, we are just in a very early stage of development, uh, but the script uh, is there. And uh, it's one more step for me into a very, you know, personal direction. And, um, you know, for me, also writing is a way to uh, evolve myself in a better person, at least that's what I'm trying to do. And uh, I feel that uh, I am doing that, and maybe I will walk this, you know, evolution with, with an audience, with a new audience, yes. you know. And, uh, yeah, I, that's what, I'm, what I can say, but it's going to be a drama. And, uh, yeah, it's still uh, under development, but uh, we're going to see it possibly at the uh, mid uh, uh, of next year. Okay, so maybe next edition. Yeah, yeah, next hopefully, yeah. Do we have a question from the audience? Yes. Okay, yeah. thanks a lot Thank for you. this conversation and joining this Q&A and uh, good luck for everything. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you. Hello everyone, I'm Cassandra from the team of the 20th edition of In the Palace International Short Film Festival. Right now I'm here with uh, Katarina Zrinka Saric, director from Czech Republic, who is uh, here to talk about uh, her film uh, Waiting Room. Uh, this film is taking part in the student comp uh, competition in the category Fiction, and is the story of uh, Mia, a woman in her 20s and her experience with endometriosis. So let's watch the trailer. Už jsi tady někdy byla? Hmm? Byla jsi už tady? Ne. Hlavně zubůka dýchat během vyšetření. To je všechno endometrioza. Mhm. Mm Oni stejně nikdy neví, co s tím mají dělat. Ne, ještě čekám. Nevím, jak dlouho tady ještě budu. Hello, Katarina, and thank you for being here in the first place. Hello, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. So, uh, the topic of, uh, this, uh, of this condition is not uh, much, uh, it's not easy to be found mm. in a film. And uh, so, uh, why exactly you, you decided to do it this, to this day? 
Uh, well, it comes also from a personal experience, uh, but uh, not only the personal experience, but uh, as I met a lot of other women who've had this condition, I realized that it's, as you said, like very little talked about, uh, but they do need support. Uh, and it's uh, actually a global problem, not just a problem of Czech Republic or Croatia from where I come from. Uh, all around the world, there's not enough um, support and treatment for this sort of disease. So that's kind of where it comes from. Yeah. Um, most of the film uh, takes place in a waiting room. So is this also supposed to be interpreted as a metaphor of how slow can it be to be a diagnosis for this condition? Yes, yes, exactly. Uh, yeah, uh, the, it's a metaphor for the condition where it feels also claustrophobic. Uh, you feel kind of locked in a space and the only thing you can do is maybe catch an eye or you know pull someone by the sleeve who is experiencing the same thing in hopes that they will see you and understand you. Yeah. It's so true that it's also difficult to be taken seriously because a lot of people just uh, normalize the pain and so they just say, okay, you're just exaggerating. You know, it's, uh, it's normal to have pain. It's not normal, of course. Yes, yes exactly. And, um, well, you said that also you were, uh, uh, you were raised in Croatia but you were born in Canada. And uh, how did your background influence your filmmaking? Well, uh, I don't think any Canadian <laughs> background actually uh, influenced my filmmaking uh, since I moved to Croatia when I was three. Uh, so, yeah, I think it's mostly... I don't know if there's that much influence from that, yeah. Okay. Uh, how did you work in uh, directing the actors in the, this film? Uh, well, it was... Um, I, I find directing actors also very collaborative. Uh, I wouldn't say like it's, um, I don't like the approach where it's like too controlling or something like that. I want them to feel uh, like they also can contribute to their own ideas into uh, the, the film. So I just wanted them to all feel mostly comfortable and um, they even had some liberty to maybe change a little bit of the dialogue and put a little bit of themselves in it. And um, before becoming a film director, you studied also um, philosophy and Croatian li literature yes. at university. And how um, did you decide later to become a film director? Well, I think, um, well, I never knew anyone who was in the film, but I always had a huge passion for film. Um, and I was also in classical music for a very long time before that. And film kind of feels like a combination of everything that I love, and it makes the most sense. So it's also a combination, I think, of literature and storytelling and philosophy and music and everything, so, yeah. How, did, how do you approach uh, specifically the storytelling in this film? Uh, it's uh, quite a, like, a, a, well, it, since it comes also from a, you know, a personal experience, then I would say I, I approach it kind of realistically and um, I, maybe now I kind of use the term emotional realism. I want things to be like, uh, triggered or evoked by uh, emotional reaction of the characters, yeah. I don't know if it's your case, but sometimes when you put uh, a, personal, uh, a personal experience in a, in, a, in a film or in a whatever work that uh, some other people will, uh, will, uh, will see, uh, it can be difficult because uh, oh, people can be afraid of judgment and also in a, in a film where every, multiple people works in it, uh, everyone can have their own idea or want to change things or uh, whatever. Yeah. How do you deal with that? Well, I think it's important to have a very clear vision and direction of what uh, you want to do. And um, of course, you know, get feedback from other people and other collaborators. But I guess the, the director's job is to have that driving force and have the main idea pulled to the finish line. And uh, we said also that uh, this topic uh, is not very talked uh, talked. Uh, and uh, do you feel as a, as a director or as, as an artist in general also sort of a responsibility in uh, making people aware or something? Maybe, yeah. But I also don't want it to be some sort of statement or it's more of just, I think, bringing close to a very personal experience that someone who even doesn't have it could relate to because I think pain is pain and uh, loss is loss, grief is grief and I think everyone has experienced something similar to that. Yeah. Uh, do you have any reference on, uh, that you have when you, when you shoot new movies? Yes, for sure. I think for this one uh, it was kind of heavily inspired by Romanian New Wave 
or Oscar Farandi and uh, uh, his uh, separation, the way that he deals with uh, the movement of the camera in relation with uh, the characters, how he introduces his characters. So I think that's kind of the reference, yeah. And uh, how do you see, um, for what is possible to know, the future of filmmaking in your country? Uh, well, I think there is, uh, in Croatia, I mean, right, uh, there's um, definitely a, a huge wave, I would say. We are kind of moving away from war topics, finally, and uh, there are more female directors, which I'm very excited to, you know, watch their films, so I think, I think it's going in a nice direction. Did you have any difficulties, maybe in the past, as a female director to, I don't know, in the in developing your project or anything? No, I wouldn't say so. That's so good, that's good yeah. to know. <laughs> good news. Yes. Are you working at something else right now? Yeah, I'm working on my graduation film that uh, it's going to head into production in October, and it's about uh, a teenage uh, girl and her mother who are both going through menopause. So there's also a kind of deal, uh, we're dealing also with um, these um, female health issues uh, that I guess I'm kind of into now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's, uh, it's a recording topic in, uh, in, your, uh, in your work. Yeah, for now. We'll see what happens later. <laughs> you never know in the, yeah. in the future, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe I'll move into comedy, so it'd be nice. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully. But that would be quite of a change. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do you have something in mind? Maybe something uh, no, that you would no, like no. to Maybe show? I will develop some humor and then it will just come by itself. We'll see. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> yeah. Do we have questions? Okay, thanks a lot for this conversation. Of course, uh, good luck for all your future projects. Thank, Thank you, you so for much. joining in the palace. Thank you.
Здравейте, уважаеми зрители! Отново сте с нас и нашите разговори от Дума на киното за късометражно кино. Ние 20 години говорим за късометражно кино и все още има какво да кажем. Днес с нас в тази сесия са част от българските автори и ще говорим с екипа на филмът «Да намериш дом». С нас е Мария Станишева, Ния Мечкоева и Момчи Грузданов. Здравейте! Здрасти! Радвам се да се видим, чувам ви. Вчера беше вашата прожекция на филмът. Видях много познати лица от вашето обкръжение, роднини, приятели. Как го приеха? Вие за първ път го виждате някои от тях, които сте работили по него. Беше вълнуващо или не? Ами за мен беше много вълнуващо, защото филма беше показан вече на доста фестивали, но за първи път наистина се събираме с екипа, с който сме работили години по него и го виждаме заедно на голям екран с готин звук. За мен също е много емоционално това, че сме точно в дума на киното, защото аз съм от София и за мен това е едно от знаковите кина. И да, голяма емоция. Благодарим за което. Не знам, кажете вие какво мислите, защото вие го видяхте за първи път. Да, за първи път на голям екран. През всички часове, дето съм отделила да го анимирам, най-накрая видях какво съм направил. Даде си открих и грешки. Това е част от садизма на продуцентите, защото показват това, за което всички работят, показват накрая и пред роднини, за да е неудобно да се обсъжда. Но анимацията е най-унеправдания жан в киното. Аниматорите за мен са хора, които седат в едни тъмни стаи, работят денонощно до откат. Същност с радостта от това да правиш кино, къде е? Аби ето, на фестивал. Ето по време на прожекцията. По време на прожекцията. В моята част на филмовото изкуство ние сме заедно на терен, правиме грешки заедно, опитваме се да ги поправим заедно, но това в анимационното кино е сложно. Видя се и в залата, че другите филми са с много големи екипи, а вие сте четири човека. Значи екипа от България е четири човека, които бяха тук и ние имаме също продуцентка във Франция, Манон Месиан и композитор и човек, който ни правеше звуковия дизайн в Франция. Но да, екипа е много малък, филмчето е 6 минути и е пилотен епизод от серия, която искаме да направим, като екипа може би ще се увеличи в бъдещето, но ние също правиме много грешки и сме се учили, правили сме промени в процеса, ние пое рисуването, значи Роси Ралева направи оригиналните дизайни и характери, след което ние пое от нея и направи може би 70% повече процента от иллюстрациите. Т.е. там имаше един период голям на проба и грешка. Момчил, който е много опитен аниматор, всъщност беше много важен в процеса, защото той някак си държеше връзката между първите дизайни, вторите, да има последователност. И да, не сме на терен, но сме в постоянна връзка, работейки наистина в тъмни малки стаички самостоятелно. Да, ние Мечкова я познаваме по-скоро като аниматор и като човек, който иллюстрира детски, не аниматор, а иллюстратор, човек, който иллюстрира детски книжки и учебници за деца. Това е вашия първи филм, по който сте работили. Как се намерихте в него, как се чувствате и имате ли желание да продължите в този екип в следващите му епизоди? Да, категорично за мен беше предизвикателство да сме на жанра. Също така да вляза в обувките на друг дизайнер и художник, който е измислил визията, да я продължа, развия и да я вкарам в схемата на филма, така че този филм да си заживее своя визуален език. Определено е интересно да смени жанра, в който работиш. Да, надявам се да продължим с нови цветове. Ще участваш ли в следващите? Да. Като тук пред камера искам. Категорично да, стига екипа, режисьора, главният художник да желая да продължим заедно. 
Да, това, това, това най-вероятно е предизвикателство. Аз намирам филмовата индустрия за далеч по-любопитна от а, иллюстративната такава, но пък в края на краищата плакати, иллюстрации и други а, жанрове и поджарове на иллюстративното изкуство са ценни. А, но каква, а, как, как се сработи в екипа, колко бързо успя да влезнеш в а, него и как... А, Uh, как, как се получи комуникацията и спойката между, между всичко, защото това са, това са артисти с, с изградена uh, индивидуалност и, uh, и, и привличането на нови членове не винаги е с добър край. Mm, нямаше никакво време за... Много бързо време. Да. В материята <съкълзвър> бяхме и в COVID, което много ни пречеше да се срещаме на живо, да, да ни не се обсъждаме тези COVID за аниматорите и, и, не влияе само това да кажа. Това, да. Което е някаква мъка, но... <съкълзвър> не, 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 имаше един, а, един ден, в който аз да направя пробни рисунки, за да се реши дали ще се пише в стила на Роси. На следващия ден трябваше да се подпише договор. Те одобриха иллюстрациите, трябваше да се направи един декор, плюс развитие на персонажите. А, аз направих повече, отколкото Мария очакваше, защото реших, че ако аз не съм окей с а, визията и с а, цялата идея как да се развие стила, няма да мога да свърша работата, за която ме викат. Така че взех, м- може би, най- трудния момент от филма да иллюстрирам, без Мария да беше поискала от мен, за да видим дали аз ще вляза в най-сложния момент за иллюстрацията. Преди да продължим да, да говорим за филма и mm-hmm. а, нека, нека да спрем тук след това а, а, изказване на абсолютния дебютант в тази продукция и да видим трейлър на филма, за да може и, а, и зрителите да се ориентират върху какво говорим сега. Meu nome é Antônia Jardena da Silva, eu sou de Milhã, é um município, 15 mil habitantes, mais ou menos. A maioria das vezes é um clima bastante quente, muito quente. A gente passou por cinco anos de seca. Aí a gente começou a receber água dos carros-pipas e era um balde por pessoa. E algumas pessoas falavam lá no interior que os mosquitos apareceram por conta da seca e a água parada que eles deixavam lá. Всъщност от, от всички тук, аз и Мария, познаваме този филм, не Мария, Маричето Станишева, познаваме този филм, в никакъв случай Мария, от хартия и от самото му начало, от един пичинг в Бринале Таван Кампус в рамките на, на този форум. Как се промени историята от тогава и колко успя да, как успя да я развиеш? Дали остана така, както я беше замислила тогава и я представи? Аз помня, че още тогава тази история направи много силно впечатление на всички, които бяха в залата. А, а преди дни ти я представи и тук пред комисия. Реакцията беше също много... Uh, много, много интересна. Uh, не знам дали е стигнал до теб, но uh, знам, че скоро време ще се свършат uh, uh, една компания, която работи документално кино uh, специално за да, uh, за да uh, започнете работа по следващата uh, серия и серии. Uh, но какво става с един проект? Как, как го развиваш? Как идва идеята? Къде го представяш? Uh, к- к- колко време uh, трябва да мине и работиш по него, за да си сигурна, че, а, че това е филма, който трябва да, за който трябва да събереш екипи и да започнеш работа. Ами, значи, филмите, по които аз работя, винаги имат някаква социална тематика. И за мен е климатичните промени и този специфичен казус с климатичните беженци е нещо, което ми е интересно, защото не е добре познато и защото е такава точно комбинация между социална тема, нещо по което аз виждам смисъл да се работи и предизвикателството да се намерят истински хора и истории, които да, нали, да, да разкажат за това сами, самите те. 
И всъщност проекта започна с а, идеята беше да бъдат трима души, защото основните причини, поради които климатичните беженци напускат а, първоначалните си места, са три. Значи или е а, жега, която като резултат от жегата части от планетата ще, ще се превърнат в пустини. Втората причина е океаните, които се надигат и ниските а, нали, островни държави и ниските места ще изчезнат под вода. И третата причина е урагани и такива екстремни времеви събития. Метеорологични, извинявам се, събития. И мислехме първоначално да бъдат по една история от трите такива вида, но като почнахме работа и проучвахме, видяхме, че историите са толкова многообразни и толкова много неща се свързват с тази тема, че можем поне 12 истории да разкажем, които са коренно различни и ще ни помогнат да покажем от повече гледни точки и проблема. Нали? И всъщност това, което ти си гледал в Берлинале, беше в резултат от един... Ние бяхме селектирани за работа по сценария на, на първия епизод и тогава ни помогнаха... Направихме, мисля, че два драфта там, което беше много полезно и представихме проекта като кратък филм от три истории след което той се превърна в това, което е сега, 12 епизода плюс интерактивна изложба, за която мога да разкажа, не знам дали имаме време, но... Разбира се, че имаме време. Аз искам да кажа, че ние излучваме директно от а, фоето на домът на киното в София. Намираме се пред туалетната. Ако видите да преминават граждани отзад, те са по различен вид, по различен вид нужда да го правят. А, шумът, който чувате, е защото барът работи. Това е част от а, концепцията на форума ни тази година да бъде всичко на открито. Не сме навън заради а, валежите, които не очаквахме, но може би, ако те не спрат скоро, ще бъдем част от следващите сценарии на ваш, на, 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 на ваш филм и ще трябва да мигрираме в някой, на, някъде по-натопло, например, Или и по-плажно. Мария забременя, като героинята във филма. Износи го. Така че... Това идва да каже, че Нищо един процес сценария да му достигне. <laughs> или, или това идва да каже, че един процес по работата на първи епизод е... Е, 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 толкова, е толкова дълъг и завършва добре. Имаме, имаме време на, на продуцентка, която представи два филмови проекта. Ще, бъде, ще представи и филм в днешната, днешната прожекция от 5 часа. Така че стискаме палци на всички, които умеят да съчетават по няколко неща и са работещи майки и са на няколко фронта едновременно. Страхотна. Аз гледах а, и част от пича и а, страшно се възхищавам на такива хора, които не ги спира нищо. Просто тя е някаква машина, това момиче. Пожелавам и целия късмет. А, по време на а, продукцията на първия епизод, който е част от състезателната програма тук на фестивала, и на нас не се случиха много абсолютно непланирани неща. Значи, първо имаше COVID, който много забави не само самата продукция, но, например, във Франция имахме гласувани средства, които се промениха заради пандемията. От една от общините ни казаха, имаме спешна нужда от а, а, финанси и урязваме ви фондовете. Нали, всякакви такива. След което аз наистина забременях, момче ли, не знам защо това трябваше да е част. А защото това идва за да даде рамка на сериала. Ако той е 12 сериен този, този сериал, а ти раждаш във всяка, във всяка. Това, това идва да каже, че трябва да го държим в тази рамка на, два, на един футболен отбор. Ако са 12 плюс резервите. Ще направя всичко възможно. Просто от темата е достатъчно важна. Мъките са идентични с родионите. Не, между другото беше страшно смешно как се припокриха нещата. Аз бях бременна. И ние трябваше да свършим филма преди да се роди моя син. Обаче нещата не, не винаги стават точно така. И ние, рисувайки как героинята от филма е бременна, аз влизам в болница и буквално излизайки от болница, първата рисунка, която виждаме на новороденото бебе в филма. Направо в един момент сънувах нали, между моята бременност и филма такива едни странни сънища, но да. 
препокриват се нещата в някакъв. И заради всички тези нали, непредвидени неща, много дълго време ни отне да го правим. Ние го правихме 4 години като цяло. От коя година беше ти на Берлинале, когато го гледам? Не, не помня, може би преди 3-4 години. Да, да, може би 4. 4, точно да. така. И от тогава до сега имаме пилотни епизод. Надявам се, наистина, искрено, да не ни отнеме по 4 години за следки от следващите, защото... Аз мисля, че пилотният епизод е най- най-времен и най- най-време, най-дълго време отнема за да се направи. Тоест, правейки, завършвайки тази серия, вие работите по следващи... Да, вече сме и, се а, Персонажите до голяма степен вече ги а, имате. Имате екипа, работите, работите добре. А, видя се. Кога ще... Какво следва тук нататък? Какво става с... А, да, колко популярен е този жан? мини телевизионна или веб серия, която, която излиза в равно някакви интервали. Тоест има ли някаква ритмика, която ти трябва да гарантираш колко често ще излиза нова серия, кога, къде ще бъде премиерата, как ще, как ще освен по фестивали, как ще бъде показан този сериал? Ами, имаме идея как ще стане, не мога да кажа със сигурност. Значи, идеята е да бъде за веб платформа на голяма телевизия. Тоест, ние най-вероятно няма регулярно да ги пускаме, ще бъдат пуснати така, че хората да могат да ги гледат. Какво едновременно. значи веб платформа на голяма телевизия? А, ако, примерно, да кажем, BBC има а, няколко телевизии, те имат и веб платформа, на която да. пускат а, се, тези нови веб серии, са формат, за който всички говорят, че е все по-популярен. Проблема за мен е като продуцент в случая, е, че все още няма достатъчно големи бюджети, които са сложени в тези, за тези платформи. И понеже анимацията не е ефтин а, жанр за производство, а, всъщност в момента това е най-голямата трудност, която имаме, да намерим правилния партньор, правилната платформа. Може би ще работим с а, една фирма от а, UK и евентуално с BBC. Това е идеята след вчерашния пич. Въобще такива събития, на които се То виждаме... Това е нова посока, в която тръгват мислите ни от вчерашния пич и присъствието на филма тук в рамките на Инда Палас. Точно така. Възможността, ако успеем да си партнираме и да работим с BBC, би била идеалния вариант, по който ние бихме искали да тръгне проекта. Тоест, а, бродкастър, нали, телевизия голяма, която да дойде а, като, като партньор, който се финансира, с помощта на фондовете в, в Франция и в, надявам се в България. В Штатите работим с Redford Center, която е а, организацията на Робърт Редфорд и двамата му синове, които подпомагат различни проекти, свързани с околната среда, най-общо казано. Те в момента ни подкрепят за следващите епизоди, които записваме интервюта за тях, но се надяваме да ни дадат и продукционен грант. Тоест в момента сме в периода на търсене на средства и намиране на правилните партньори за серията, но сме много оптимистично настроени. Това, Смисъл... това, това, това е много хубаво, че има а, развитие от тук нататък и въобще има, има на, на къде да се, а, да се мисли, да се ходи. Но ти си продуцент на един друг а, популярен филм в нашото минало, а, това е Баща. Той също е документален анимационен филм. А, той беше в, за времето си революционно успешен за българската действителност. Отново, отново имаше копродуценти за анимационен филм. Може би това беше първият анимационен филм, правен в копродукция, в тази, в тази му форма, документален документ. Да, за формата си. Да, да, помня, че той имаше много добра фестивална реализация. Помня, че имаше откупки от, на няколко телевизии и много добро разпространение. Как като продуцент на, на двете форми намираш, че се е променила средата за тези, може би, десетина години от както а, излезна а, баща, а, документално анимационния филм, заедно с а, 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 като част от компот колектив или, или в някаква колаборация работихте тогава и сега а, този, този документален проект, който е отново анимационен в тази му форма, която ще бъде а, модерна и нова в кратка, а, кратка а, сериална форма. Ами много са се променили нещата. Значи баща си беше, а, те бяха пет лични истории, които бяха подредени в един филм. Тоест това си беше индивидуален а, нали, кратък проект. 
който ти си прав първо фестивалите, се справихме добре, там имахме като разпространител студио Бонобо от Харватска, Ваня, която е просто супер разпространител, ти я познаваш. След това той беше купен от Арте, беше финансиран от Робърт Бош, което вече не съществува като финансираща схема и след това нали, имаше някакъв VOD платформен живот. Докато сега това, което това, което аз опитвам да направя, е наистина нов тип кратка серия в същия жанр, нали, анимационно-документален. Но разпространението му няма как да се случи без голям партньор. Тоест, баща е изцяло независим проект, който първо се прави и след това му се търси разпространение. Докато този тип кратки веб серии, всъщност нашия бюджет за 12 епизода е колкото бюджет на един пълнометражен анимационен филм, т.е. много по-голям. И ние нямаме как без а, сериозен партньор, а, като телевизия голяма, да го осъществим. И в този смисъл, нали, просто е друг механизма на финансирането и разпространението вече ще бъде гарантирано. Тоест ние ще имаме а, платформа, която ще се, ще се включи в проекта с финанси, което ще бъде гаранция колко хора ще го гледат, което пък става гаранция за Френския филмов център и регионалния център да го подкрепят. Да, но аз направих този паралел, защото баща е символичен омнибус от пет истории. Тоест пет крат, кратки веб филма, подобно на това, което, което видяхме. Ако събереш новите 12 епизода в един, това ще бъде един двоен баща, например един, един пълнометранжен анимационен филм, как, както каза. Ако сега беше продуцент на баща с целият си опит, който си натрупвала познанието си и работата с фондове, колеги и партньори, щеш ли да го разпространиш като омнибус или щеш ли да го разпространиш като, като пет отделни, още по-късометражни филма? Ами първо, баща не може да бъде пет отделни, защото той е замислен не като омнибус, а като истории, които са вплетени във времето. Ако си спомнеш, ще започваме с детските спомени на всички герои, минаваме през... Нали, той е хронологичен за всяка история, но те са вплетени. И това беше една от големите предизвикателства. Тогава Иван Богданов беше общия режисьор, иначе всяка история си имаше собствен режисьор. И тази работа да се вплетат и да стане един филм емоционално беше най-трудната. Там работихме и с филма Ло, един страхотен консултант, също режисьор от Англия. Баща, според мен, направи максимума за момента, в който беше произведен, за независим формат. Наистина, мисля, първа такова продукция между... България, Харватска и Германия, първия анимационно-документален, първия е, кратък анимационен с... Може би в миналото сме имали, сега не искам да, да кажа единствено, но той беше на над 100 фестивала, 30 да, да. пъти награден въобще. А, мисля, че много добре се справихме с баща, докато този проект сега той е съвсем друг като формат. И не е два пъти баща, защото баща е 16 минути, а тук наистина става пълнометражен филм, като обем. А, идеята обаче е, освен по а, платформи, да можем да го разпространяваме като една интерактивна изложба. И това, което аз си представям и за което също търсиме партньори, е да можем да направим нещо като представи си прожекция на бъдещите 50 години, какво ще се случва с а, картата на Земята, кои части ще станат пустини, кои ще изчезнат под вода, къде ще имаме най-големи проблеми с а, климата, точно както тук в България в момента има. Шегувам се, разбира се, много да, по-екстремно. Вероятно ще повлияе на имотния пазар О, това, тази сигурност... изложба. Да. А, не, не, климатичните промени влияят на имотния пазар. Но изложбата си я представяме да бъде от библиотеки и училища до големи, да представяме на големи срещи политически, където, например, да се говори за статута на климатичните беженци. Тоест, проекта си има големи цели, чисто как да кажа, политическо лубиски. То е малко по-активистки проект. Това е свързан и с екологичното възпитание на подрастващи и по-големи млади хора. В този ред на мисли, вие ще имате ли активност по училища, университети и други, други форуми, къде се събират млади хора? Абсолютно. И в момента, представяйки проекта, значи преди един месец го представяхме в Швеция, един форум в Малмио който е специализиран за а, детска аудитория. Журито бяха тинейджери и страшно ни беше интересно какво ще кажат, 
къде биха го гледали, искат ли да го гледат, има ли интерес. Значи такъв страхотен интерес. Аз имам чувство, че тинейджерите първо знаят много повече от нас по тази тема и много повече се интересуват. Проблема е, че има някакво, някаква несъвместимост между това търсене на тази аудитория и телевизиите, при които ние отиваме и казваме, смятаме, че този филм така и така има интерес. И те ни казват, не, не е достатъчно забавен, не е достатъчно весел, а, не е точно това, което търсиме, а според те нас... Ами, те търсят финансов интерес. Знаеш, за, за тинейджерите казват, телевизиите казват, ние не можем да ги привлечем тинейджерите, защото те си търсят а, по техен си начин съдържание. А според мен те ги подценяват и им пускат съдържание, което не е за тях и те разбира се, че отиват на друго място. Естествено. Разбираш и просто... Вариантът е ние да влезем в техните канали през тези емоционални да. истории, да им покажеш климатичните промени, не просто като случващи се, а като изживявайки ги. Защото... Точно. И там е образователната е сила. сила. Не е нали, да се размахва пръст, а просто да чуеме тези различни истории и през тях да разберем какво се случва. В, в този ред на мисли Министерство на образование като институция не би ли била а, подходяща финансираща организация за част от а, а, тези серии? Защото ти беше на една среща между а, директори, които финансират късометражно кино. Но късометражното кино като изкуство е едно, но късометражното кино като, а, като модел за, за, за показ, модел за, а, за, за припознаване с обществен, социален или друг модел е друго. Тоест, образ... киното като образователна форма, като иллюстративен модел на, на съществуващ проблем, би ли намерил място в, в финансиращите програми на Министерството на образованието? Ами, честно не съм запозната с финансирането в България образователното, защото ми се струва, че те просто нямат такива... Веднага ще кажат филмовия център. Не знам, трябва да не, го проучам. Отварям тази скоба, защото е, това е възможно и защото може да се направят, да се направи връзка, връзка или сътрудничество с... Може би Министерство с... на екологията през, през няколко министерства... Т-та, така ли, че Ще това е, това е синергичен проект, който а, обхваща различни видове институти, които имат роля в това. А, не, не просто в направата на един художествен продукт, ами роля и в възпитанието, роля и в обучението, роля и в... А, в, а, в това да, да конструират ценност на система в едно общество. Абсолютно. Във Франция мога да ти кажа за пилотния а, епизод. Нали? Във Франция вече е част от една програма, която се финансира от тамошния филмов център, където а, това стана дума и миналия ден, когато говорихме с директорите на НФЦ и на НФК. Значи финансират се филми, които киносалоните могат да използват и да пускат преди прожекциите на пълнометражните филми тематично. Тоест, ако ти ръководиш дума на киното теоретично, и има такъв а, фонд от кратки филми, които НФЦ а, финансира. Ти би могъл да избереш в програмата си преди друг филм на тая тематика да пуснеш нашия кратък филм, като това ще бъде заплатено а, нали, от а, НФЦ, както и на авторите, нали, вече авторските права отделно се уреждат. Според мен това е един модел. Следващ модел е в Штатите, ще бъдем част от една програма в която той е колектив от документални а, филмейкъри, които си дават филмите отново в нещо като библиотека, от която избират всички а, американски училищни и университетски библиотеки, като много често не само показват филмите, ами канат и авторите да се обсъжда с тях. Това е много по-интересно за учениците като формат. А, винаги, когато е документално, а, има повече интерес образователен. И въобще има страшно много начини за разпространение и прав си трябва да се замислим и за партньорства. Аз много се притеснявам от партньорства с българските институции, защото са много времеемки, тромави. Напоследък нямаме две години правителство, смисъл с кой да разговаряш за какво. Надявам се, това ще бъде... Да, разбирамте много добре, но ти в, 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 в този филм си в ролята на продуцент и на режисьор. А, какво е предизвикателството в това да взимаш продуцентски и творчески решения едновременно? Тоест, не се, понякога няма ли сблъсък на интереси и коя, коя от двете шапки носиш по-често, тази на, на режисьор или тази на продуцент? 
Ами, когато сме в продукция, режисьорската шапка, когато търсим финансиране и сме между нали, продуцентската, но аз имам страхотна продуцентка в Франция, която не можеше да бъде тук, защото е в НС в момента Манон, която поема голяма част от продуцентската работа. Тя отговаря за работата с всички институции във Франция. Например, моят френски е доста... Нали, не, аз скоро живея там и не е на, на ниво, което ми позволява. Тя... А, просто поема голяма част от тази тежест. Аз се занимавам доста с представяне на проекта на международни пичове. Този тук беше много интересен и пълен. Експертите бяха с страшно добър фидбек. Просто беше много полезно. Това повече го поемам като продуцент. Но някакси и двете, понеже проектите, които правя са независими и малки, аз съм свикнала да комбинирам двете роли. Ти имаш продуцентска компания, регистрирана в Франция и кандидат също може би. Там беше първото финансиране на, на този, не, този проект или е българско първото финансиране? Коя, коя държава първо, при, първо припозна този проект като значим? Значи в Франция имаме партньорска копродукционна фирма или Аде Филм, която имаме продуцент там, копродуцент. А иначе Animadocs, моята компания, е регистрирана като фирма в Штатите и в България. А, за, за краткия филм, който представяме тук, първото финансиране дойде от Френския национален филмов център, следващото беше от Френския регионален а, фонд на Новела Китен и третото финансиране беше от копродукционния фонд на НФЦ. Да. Което, само да се върнем към българските институции, от гласуването в творческа комисия, нали, приемането на проекта, до реалното финансиране от минах, минаха две години, защото попаднахме в нулевите години, беззаконие, нали, всякакви. И просто казвам, че е много трудно в български конституции. Ами, да, да, то, те работят така, защото това е естествен подбор на идеите, на одобрените идеи, и те се превръщат във филми само ако стоят във времето, защото филмовият център не би искал да финансира преходни идеи, които след 2-3 години ще Той са нищо. Да Проверката на времето ми не е. Така да го разбира. Но сега, с, сега малко нещата са се забързали и са се нормализирали. В смисъл сесиите върват. Има, доколкото знам, пак се чака бюджет, който новото правителство. В смисъл, непрекъсно се занимаваме с политически неща. Да, да, неща не пречи на финансиране на, на проекти, защото на, сега има, има развитие, има раздвижване, което показва, че, а, че има човек, който може да носи отговорност и нещата се получават. Има човек, който не иска да носи отговорност и те се само, само затлачват. Нали? Това са... Тук пак опираме до човешкия фактор. Нали? Ако ако материала е кофти, както преди години чухме от нашия премьер, то значи не се получава нищо. Но ако има човек, който знае какво иска, тогава, тогава нещата се движат. Аз искам да кажа, че съм на същото мнение, че филмовия център започва да работи, защото ние за първи път от много години получихме финансиране за фестивала си преди фестивала. Честито, преди фестивала е по-добре, да. Разликата е голяма. Представи си за кратък филм, две години пауза между одобряване и финансиране. И ние в тези две години какво правим? Седим и се молим. На... В смисъл това по-скоро се превръща в пречка, отколкото в помощ. Да. Надявам се да не се случва в бъдеще. Разби, но... Разбирам много добре, но нека, нека да поговорим за, за филма Тили написа и конструира историята и първоначалната идея за филма и който ни помогна на сценарно ниво в последствие. Значи, първата връзка с героинята, защото тя е първото нещо нали, в написаното на сценария, първата връзка с героинята беше през един мой познат, който беше работил с BBC в Бразилия по темата за Зика пандемията. И той, интервюирайки много хора, беше направил връзка с това младо момиче, чиято история много ме трогна, защото тя... Ам, значи, историята на кратко е, че температурите се повишават драматично, след като 5 години в селото на това младо момиче няма капка дъжд. И а, комарите, които са носители на вируса Зика, се преместват с дигащите се температури на север. И те започват да получават едни цистерни с вода, които обаче, по ирония на съдбата, самите цистерни стават гнездата на пандемията. И това момиче на 17 години се заразява с болестта без да знае, забременява. 
и трябва абсолютно самостоятелно да напусне селото си, да отиде в големия град, абсолютно сама, да вземе решение да гледа едно болно дете. Тя разказва как нали, е обмислила да го изостави. Смисъл, това са ни много драматични такива лични избори, които тя прави. И за мен историята беше много силна, защото свързва нали, една от причините, по която, поради която хората се движат, и един вирус, за който много хора не знаят, че изобщо е свързан с климатичните промени. Нали. И оттам всъщност записахме, аз помолих човека, който беше в Бразилия, да започне да интервюира. Направихме три интервюта с подадени от мене въпроси, в нали, смисъл исках някои специфични неща, които да можем после да анимираме, да я разпитаме. И след това всъщност процесът е нали, съкръщаване на интервюто в най-най-малкия му вид, т.е. от, да кажем, 3 часа интервю правим 4 минути и половина. И аз написах анимационния сценарий, в смисъл какво се случва в анимацията, като след като сценария е готов, е доста един процес, който е абсолютно екипен с иллюстратора и след това с аниматора, защото те винаги а, са участвали с идеи, с промени, т.е. не е нещо, което аз написвам и вече нали, не, не мърда. Така да. че след сценария вече се почва екипната работа. А визуалните работа. решения на а, образите, на кой от двамата художници на а, Русица или на, на ние са в... А, пит, питам за една героиня, защото а, искам да си отговоря на въпроса дали каквото и да рисува човек винаги си прави автопортрет. <съква> Ами, оригиналните, оригиналните герои и а, нали, бекграундите са на Роси. Като тя направи дори за следващите два епизода, ние имаме още двама герои, след което ние оттам ги пое, доразви и ние също мислим, че има някои прилики. Смисъл, не си само ти. Вчера говори. Наистина, оригинално героинята е нарисувана от Роси а, и вече всички емоционални състояния на героинята там вероятно, аз съм придала нещо от моя облик, но крайно сметка рисунката първата е на Роси. А, така, но, че... но човек винаги рисува себе си в някакъв да. вариант. А... И, и винаги има момче, който да ги раздвижи по подходящия начин. Момче, който е много търпелив от всякъде. Толкова лесно с такава визия да. се работи, че мен ми е било наистина приятно и, и ми беше лесно, защото Тая визия тя предполага стила, който не е обясния, ми така леко е лимитит. Много лесно и много приятно се работиш. Дай Боже всеки. Да. На нас ми беше много приятно да работим. На мене с вас двамата свързва. А, преди да приключим, аз искам да кажа, че се познаваме фестивално с теб от 16 години. Ти се появи на четвъртият ни фестивал като служител на Британски съвет заедно с нашата мила Яна Ноел, която по-късно, с която по-късно работихме заедно. Как, как намираш скока за тези 16 години от четвъртото до 20-то издание на фестивала? Как ни, как, как ни намираш сега? Добре пораснали, лошо устарели? Помъдрели. Ами, скока е огромен. Значи, на толкова много нива. Аз, когато дойдох за първи път, а, първо залите, в които прожектирахте там, а, не бяха особено нали, а, добри и въпреки романтиката на двореца в Бълчик, според мен това не беше най-подходящото място, като помещение и като програмата, която а, тогава беше, тогава нямаше тези пич сесии, които за мен са абсолютно страшно важни за създаване на общност. Значи аз тук съм от няколко дни на фестивала и съм страшно впечатлена от а, продуцентите, от младите режисьори, които искат да участват, които искат да си представят проектите от качеството, на което ги представят. Според мен за това се искат постоянни усилия и подкрепа от организации като вашата, надявам се и от университетите, в които а, учат. Също така, някои от дебатите, които видях и презентациите, например, аз никога не съм си представила, че ще успея да в такъв а, неформален а, формат да говорим с директора на НФЦ, с директора на Национален фонд култура. И тук имаше една камара млади продуценти и режисьори, които имаха много неща да предложат, да кажат и тия срещи са ужасно необходими в сегашния момент, защото много неща предстоят да се променят. А, 
За мен беше изненада дума на киното. Дума на киното е едно от най-хубавите кина в София. И ако може фестивала така да се... Той в момента е и в Перник, и да. тук, нали? Да, за щастие, защото на фестивал за късометражно кино в България е роден в дворец. Аз а, го а, казвам това непрекъснато, не за друго. Факт е, че ние имаме навици породени от това, но го казвам, защото фестивал за късометражно кино е многопрофилен. Той не е само прожекции и има нужда от съвкупност и от много помещения, където на това, да се, програмата му да се реализира. А, да бъдем в домът на киното е продиктовано от обстоятелства, които ние не подозирахме, че ще, а, че ще има и за това а, просто всичко, което е възможно да бъде усвоено, то е флоета, туалетни, предтуалетни, а, втори, първи зали и така нататък. И въпреки това не е достатъчно и а, сме много тъжни, че а, международната ни научна конференция трябваше да я отложим, защото няма как да се проведе на, а, а, тук в, а, в рамките на този форум. А, за това а, а просто нямаме търпение ремонтът и а, възстановяването на дворецът в Перник, на културата в Перник да, а, да завърши, за да може ние да се преместиме изцяло а, там. А, сега а, 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 романтично е, че помагаме а, домът на киното да не затвори. Ние се, а, това ни кара да се чувстваме значими в момента в рамките на тази седмица, но това не е, нашата, не, не, не е нашето място. Ние сме дворцови хора и на нас ни трябват бални зали, на нас ни трябват големи помещения, на нас ни трябва, ни трябва един различен дворцов уют. А, домът на киното предполага да ходим по тапачки на прожекции а, и да ходим на откриващи и закриващи а, а, церемонии по а, домашно облекло. Може би някакъв такъв формат, който е смесен между Перник и може би и други градове и София, но на мен ми харесва това, че в дома на киното с кафенето, с пространствата. Аз от три дена се чувствам, че тук се случва нещо много приятно и се Чувствуваш запознавам. Се вкъщи, чувствам се вкъщи, вкъщи да. а, запознах се с много хора, да, отрасвам се. Също може би може да се комбинира с музея на София, с други кина, които затвориха в квартала. Так, така е, да. Подземно, например, може да се направи връзка с да басейна, който се ползва за хранилище в момента. Ние се опитваме и работим с Рим София. Смешното за тази годишното издание е, че фестивалът за късометражно кино от Перник се провежда в София, гостите са настанени в Москва, а партиите са в Рим. Така, <съща> <съща> така че ето това е случката в момента. Друг елемент тази година, който също ми е много приятен, е тези групи, които вече на време свират от 11 часа автор партитата, защото това са едни а, за мен непознати млади музиканти. Слушах едно твое интервю, че някои от тях са правили музика за част от филмите, които са в програмата. Така, Тоест да. има и тази връзка. И може би и след COVID просто на мен много ми липсва този обмен нали, да видим нови хора, да чуем нова музика, защото ние като хора, които правим филми, имаме нужда от тая, от тая среда. Просто тази изолация, в която бяхме няколко години, беше много тежка и uh, In the Palace за мен е точно като противоотровата и се чувствам много уютно. Да. Да, къде всъщност, дворец без толкова хубави концерти съм изгледал на вашите фестивали. А, киното като синтез на изкуства за нас е важно да го, да го фрагментираме и да покажем и различните самостоятелни форми на, на, на това. Всички музиканти са а, хора, които правят филмова музика или са артисти, които, които правят музика и а, са хора, които са част от нашата програма. А, имам опасението, че 10-минутната ни а, сесия е изтече, за това, а, понеже виждам, че загубихме интересът на а, чуждестранната ни аудитория, а, мога да ви предложа да прекратим тази сесия и да се преместим на бара в дома на киното. Много благодарим за внимание. Благодаря и аз, че бяхте с нас в рамките на тази сесия. Очаквайте следващи такива, докато приключи фестивалът за късометражно кино. Благодаря ви.
Hello everyone, I'm Cassandra from the team of the 20th edition of In the Palace International Short Film Festival. I'm glad of introducing you today the crew from the film Psy Chicken, who is taking part in the competition from Best Fiction. Here with me I have the director Atam Mujabi, um, uh, the, uh, co-producer Nicoletta Cataldo, line producer uh, Ferzanel Gamzadeh, and the head, the head of the art department Eleonora Dian. Yeah. So this is the story of a thief who gets surprised by a woman who was trying to burglar and he commits murder. He runs away but he gets followed constantly by a little chicken owned by the woman. Before starting the conversation, let's watch the trailer. Hello everyone, I'm very happy of having you here today. Thanks for joining. And uh, so, first thing first, I know that this uh, film uh, takes inspiration from uh, the novel Crime and, and Punishment from Dostoevsky. Uh, can you tell us more about uh, this inspiration? How did you come up with this movie? Um, hello to you. I'm so happy to be at the Inter Palace International Film Festival, uh, which I feel it like my home because uh, we've been here uh, at the pitching uh, session 2018 and won the award there. Uh, I'm so happy to be here. About uh, uh, being inspired by crime and punishment uh, is uh, I was looking uh, for years to find a solution to uh, make a short film based on it because I find it very noir and very available to show the mental um, situation of a killer. But I couldn't find the solution. Um, until one day, my brother was telling me a story, actually a sleep he had for years, about uh, the baby chicken he had as a child. Because there is a very um, deep, culture in Iran uh, between baby chickens, uh, grandchildren and grandmothers. They keep it at home and grandmothers learn the, the youngsters to um, take care of uh, uh, tiny animals. And my brother killed a baby chicken as a children very unconsciously and for years he was sleeping same sl dream so it just came to my mind you know the pieces gathered together what if a ch baby chicken crime and punishment killing someone feeling guilty gathered together and uh, yeah that's how it oh, that's a that's a very interesting story I would have never imagined that very personal yeah yeah <laughs> and uh, about the visual references uh, is there uh, anything in particular that uh, inspired you from uh, the visual point of view it was uh, very noir uh, the first thing that I noticed from my point of view it was very similar to Sin City for example but I don't know if you had any re any other refer other reference actually um, Eleonora can reply to yeah. well, you can start and then I can uh, for me, uh, I made 11 short films till now, and all of them are black and white, and I did my best to find an Iranian style for a film noir, and uh, mix it with experimental cinemas. Uh, I wrote uh, TV series, and uh, it was a personal conflict, and I was very happy to uh, find Nicoletta and Eleonora and uh, bring different minds from different cultures, find a new point of view to Iranian architecture because I believe architecture is a basic element uh, of film noir. And when you find Iranian architecture, uh, it would be a kind of miracle. And Eleonora was uh, 
Yes, well, because yes, we take some inspiration with uh, Sin City, but it's not the only one, and, and it's not the main inspiration. Because Sin City gets us a, a style, and now it's quite stereotype style, but we mix a lot of stuff together. Also because when we met, met first, for me it was very fascinating that the chicken in Iran, some, you can find it colored. <laughs> so we start from that. For me it was quite difficult to understand at the beginning this stuff because I, I, we don't do to have chicken colored. It's not in our it's culture. It's not in our culture, no. But this is, this is the point, that chicken are colored, not brown, but blue, yellow, uh, green, red, bright, bright colors. So bright. this is where we start, actually, to put something very artificial, very colored, in something black and white. We, this is the starting point. And then we develop the style and everything, but there is a lot of stuff. Right. And um, uh, well, this film is the result of a collaboration between Italy and Iran. And uh, can you tell us more about that and what were maybe, maybe the difficulties of uh, this uh, collaboration or maybe also such a long distance and uh, everything that, uh, <laughs> that implies? Yeah, uh, we met in China actually, so that starts <laughs> our uh, meeting and our idea to work together on a project. Um, we went two times to Tehran uh, to make a um, uh, pitching session uh, in a festival, the International Tehran Short Film Festival, and also to make location scouting. So uh, all the um, parts of the preparation was very interesting. Uh, and look for every right places, also because we shot between two cities, which are Tehran and Kazvin, and uh, because we wanted to use real location to tell our stories. So that's also, uh, in my opinion, um, a powerful part of, of our short film. Uh, difficulties, yes, of course. <laughs> uh, I guess every project has got some. <laughs> uh, in our case, yeah, distant, but also COVID came. <laughs> uh, that's the reason why it uh, was so important to have uh, on the territory, uh, Ferzane was very precious for us as a line producer, because of course we should coordinate, because we couldn't go during the shooting time as we were hoping, <laughs> exactly, and planned actually. Um, regarding the production strategy, uh, actually we mixed together different kind of finance, financing sources. Uh, it was a long path, but um, at the end we, we made it. So, uh, as Ata said, uh, in 2018 we were already uh, here in the palace, so you welcomed uh, us already and uh, we won the pitching session. So, it was a uh, Mm, you know, very interesting uh, how to get together different sources and also different kind of help. Because, for example, on the territory, we could involve the uh, local realities uh, that really help us to make it real. And also, we really thank uh, all our crew members that couldn't come here, but I'm sure they're following us uh, on your page now. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, would you like also to tell us about uh, your experience as a producer? Uh, yes. Um. I think the most important things about uh, was uh, to work together, a group from Italy and a group from Iran. At first, uh, we hope that uh, the Italian group can come to Iran and we will work together, but unfortunately, because of the COVID situation, um, at first it was hard. But finally, we found a way, and uh, we, uh, we did it um, very well. Of course, we, we had a lot of online meeting together, but at first, finally, we did it. And I'm really happy for this brilliant experience. It was great. Thank you. At the end, Ata learned Italian, so of course, it's well good. Yeah. <laughs> Another important thing, of course. Yeah. And uh, Ata, you said that, uh, of course, this is not your first project. Uh, you, had, uh, many, many, you did many short films. And uh, how do you feel that uh, you matured as a director from the beginning till today? 
from the first day till now. Exactly. How do you feel? Um, you know, uh, it's I I try to do different jobs in my life, but nothing satisfies me as this. And uh, it is a kind of miracle, and especially when you work with uh, passionate people, I can describe my feeling. So, you know, tears come around, because uh, finding Nicoletta was a miracle, uh, because we both, for example, we were in China, I was distributing my recent short film, and she, it was a film noir, an experimental film noir, and she was there with an animation film noir, and uh, I had my story in my hand, she had some ideas, we found together. And then, Daniele Catali is a miracle, Kevan <laughs> Mohseni is another miracle, Farzane Elenor, and everyone were at this project. I think uh, uh, it's very interesting. Yeah. We can feel the emotion. <laughs> Mm. Yeah, it was like a, a meeting, it was like destiny, because uh, both of you were in China, so it, who would have believed that? <laughs> yeah, exactly. It has to be like that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, do we have questions from the audience? And, of course, Armando. Oh, okay. and also Armando, my genius of course, friend. Of course. Um, yeah, his the music. Composer. The composer, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, all the music and sound part um, are, was and are very important for our short film. Because it's without dialogue, so yeah. uh, usually it's always important music and sound so part well. every, everywhere, but uh, in, in our case even more. So yes, yeah. it was a really a, a mix of a different culture professional, also because our methodology were different, even in the shooting and in the planning, what we are going to do. So it was a kind of... Uh, improving and uh, learning, continuous learning, learning for everybody. Search, and study, and uh, mm. yeah. Hard yeah eventually work. everything merged together perfectly also from, uh, from the music department. Uh, there is this uh, sort of jazz style, something like that, that mixed perfectly with the noir, and it's, uh, I, I was really impressed by that, I have to say. So <laughs> really. It's a very deep study, uh, mm, starting from the Iranian and Indian music, uh, mm. uh, going through all the references that Atta um, gave to Armando um, regarding the genre, because of course it's a genre movie, so uh, we really uh, worked uh, very carefully on each element. Also the fact of, uh, of the location, as you said before, about uh, looking for the right spot, also the architecture that was uh, the Iranian architecture, that was, uh, it was even visually, visually beautiful to see. How, how, how was uh, the work in looking for the location, for example? Uh, mm. uh, in uh, pre-production, uh, they, they searched for locations several times in Iran. Eleonora um, and Nicole, they came Nicole. to Iran and uh, they searched for the location. And uh, I think the most important things in this project was that they discover each other. You know, different artists from different culture, they just discover common things between the culture. And uh, I think uh, the result is really Belarians. It's, it's very good, yeah. And other more description, if you want. Mm -mm -mm. You have microphone. In the, lo in the location scouting, yeah, I remember that uh, Ata was very clear on the fact, and also Eleonora, on the fact that the movie should have a kind of two parts. The first part, when we are in the lady's house, uh, we show, let's say, um, um, like a, a part of the city uh, which like big houses, n no building, you know. Um, when the thief moved to the second part of the movie, so we follow him, we start to follow him and his obsession, um, we put inside a lot of symbols. Uh, uh, everything, all the locations start to be narrow and narrow and narrow, like... Uh, um, um, to know. Exactly, going with our protagonist uh, in, uh, you know, in a place uh, more and more claustrophobic. And also modern. Yeah, and modern, of course. Uh, because, mm -mm. because there is a, I, 
we, well, we found a kind of metaphoric elements in, our, in the script that uh, there is a conflict between uh, traditional way of thinking and uh, old people and uh, new generation and modernism uh, and the story and maybe the main conflict in Iran even now is that we, you, are, you want to be a modern country and you, some people still believe you have to stick to the traditions. And we found it uh, in a story and developed it in locations and it was interesting too. Yeah. Eventually it turned out to be a great project and uh, I, really I really hope that it will be even more known in the future. Uh, Thanks a lot for having joined this uh, Q&A. It was really a pleasure. And uh, go <laughs> watch Sai Jigo because it's really a very good project. And uh, wish you all the best for your future career. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Hello. Hello. My name is Andrea Nastivo and we'll continue the Q&A session with... Can you please present yourself? Yes, I am Ameri Sabasta. I am writer and director of the short film Not Tomorrow. Okay. Um, so let me, let me start with the question. Where is your, your movie based? Where is it filmed? Uh, it's based in Athens and the, especially in the area of the port, Piraeus, mm -hmm, the mm -hmm. port of Athens. And uh, how would you describe your characters? Well, uh, <laughs> that's a big question. My characters. The, ma the main character is uh, Michalis, um, a young man uh, who, is, uh, who has only 24 hours to, to change things in his life. And he's surrounded of uh, the other members of his family, his mother, his uh, youngest uh, brother, and his father. Also, we see some of his friends, his closest friend, and some uh, of his gang. Mm -hmm. And we see the girl he meets and falls in love with. Would you say that the girl has an especially... It's a, it, the, the meeting with the girl is a turning point with, uh, for him? Yes. What is, is her, her role in, uh, in his... Um, uh, he meets her at the point that he realizes that uh, he wants to, to change things in his life so badly, but mm -hmm. he doesn't have the time to do it. And um, as, as we, we saw in, in your movie, um, would you say that the choices that we make, for example, his, his life choices, uh, define us? Define uh, our future, maybe our... Well, uh, unfortunately, many times they do. Uh, at some point, Michali says if he could change everything he would, and he's young, we'd like to stay optimistic, and he obviously dreams of the future, but his situation is uh, very difficult. And this is one thing I had in my mind, that uh, how much our environment and uh, our past uh, determines our future, or if we have the power to change it. Do we have the power to change it? Well, I, I'd like to believe so. It's very difficult, but I'd like to believe so, yes. That we have control, even if we realize things a bit later on. Yes, at least we can try. At least we can try. And do you think he regrets the, the, the life he chose for himself in the end? Sure, sure. Uh, he regrets and uh, he has second thoughts, but also we see a lot of his environment and uh, the reason he, he, he made that choices. So we understand. We're, um, I, I don't want to judge any of my characters. I just want to see through their eyes the situation. So we understand better by knowing his surroundings, why he made these specific choices. Do you, do you believe in fate? In uh, as a part, not really. Not really? Not really. I don't believe in fate. But only in decisions? <laughs> yes. <laughs> So we, okay, okay. And what about, because um, I, I read it's inspired by uh, real events. Yes, uh, it's, it's inspired by stories from friends we know and narrations very much. And also um, I read too that it's inspired, maybe not inspired, but maybe the pandemic has a, yes, has a role uh, in your point of view that you represent with your yes, film. Yes, yes. Uh, what happened was that um, Not Tomorrow is actually our, um, my seventh short film. So I didn't exactly plan to make another uh, short film, uh, but uh, during the pandemic we got inspired and, and uh, wrote this story and then there was a special fund in Greece for um, after the pandemic and so it happened but I'm very glad I did because I think it's actually it's actually the the film that I through this film I found my my genuine voice really how I, I think that that the characters and the way of filming uh, it's very close to, to what I really am as a creator, as a director, and it's, it shares the same universe with my feature film that I am preparing this time. Life on, in a boat? 
is, is your life page? in a bit. Yeah, life maybe. in a bit. Yes. So you're not going to make any more uh, short films, or oh no, I, I will <laughs> never give up on short films. <laughs> I like short form very much, but you know, at some point I would like to to try a fi to, to do a feature film. I'm preparing now for three or four years already, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. this summer we are shooting. Okay. This August. But I, um, I feel very comfortable in short form. I really like it. And I think in the future maybe I will come back and uh, do another short, if I have the chance. And what about uh, funding for this feature, feature film? Because you said earlier you got the funding for uh, the short film. This yes. opportunity for funding. Mm -hmm. And what about this one? Well, the feature film, um, it has funding from, um, it's a Balkan film actually, <laughs> it has funding from uh, Montenegro, North Macedonia, Greece of course and Cyprus and it's, it's a huge project, we ran it for th three, four years so uh, through, you know, uh, crossroads of Thessaloniki and other um, uh, workshop we participated, we, we found co-producers and we're very happy about it. Well, can you tell me more about it, about the story in it? Well, as I told you, it shares the same universe with Life in a Beat, but the main star is a girl, a very young girl. For Life in a Beat? Yes, yes. Uh, in her early 20s. That uh, she, she tries to walk her own beat. Uh, she has, um, she's very poor and works in the supermarket. She gets fired and at the same time she learns that she's pregnant. So she struggles you know, to define her life and to, to see what she will do with her future. And it's also based in uh, Greece, Athens city center of today. <laughs> it sounds very interesting. Maybe after shooting you'll come, come to festivals next year or oh, maybe? I wish, I wish. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. <laughs> And any, any more future future projects or maybe um, wishes for the future? Well, for now, I'm trying to concentrate on my future film. Of course, I would like to, to do more in the future, but, but at this time, at this point, I'm fully 100% trying to be concentrating in the future film because it's my first and I really need all, to put all my energy on it. Yes. <laughs> I understand. And let's get a little bit back not in this tomorrow. particular... Yes, not tomorrow. Um, could you uh, tell me more about the relationship between uh, uh, the main character and his, uh, his parents? Um, yes. It, because this is uh, too a main topic in, uh, yes, in the yes, film. Yes, yes, yes. So, uh, Michalis' parents are separated and he stayed back with his mother and his brother and actually it's the reason that he got you know uh, in all this trouble trying to make some money for his family and not having any you know back uh, supporting uh, supportive background uh, he didn't study so all the pressure of his uh, family and their you know poverty uh, got on him and he made that uh, bad decision uh, he feels like he's the father of the family and she, he's um, forced to grow up and take all the responsibilities and this is why he got the wrong, he went to the wrong way. He went to the wrong way but um, it's still is this the only way? Because no, it's not the only way, it mm -hmm. was a bad moment. But it, um, he just didn't manage to avoid the, the danger of the environment mm -hmm. or he wanted to, to make money faster for his uh, family. Mm -hmm. Obviously, mm -hmm. it's a mistake, but you know, it's, it's a mistake that could happen to, Everyone. to a person next door, to us. Of course. And uh, now he reflects and tries to, to make the best uh, for his family and he tries to make his father come close to his uh, little brother Mm -hmm, so the mm -hmm. little brother has a better future than himself. Him. And do you think in this case, prison in the end is a good thing for him to... I'm sorry, I didn't the, 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 the ending 
for yes. the ending. It's a, maybe a good maybe a good thing for him because he realizes all this stuff and tries to make changes. Yes, of course, of course, of course. And um, there is a slight hope that he can come out of this situation and uh, do something better. I think the um, one of his final phrases that is, if I could, I would say it's everything. It's uh, a promise for the future, but we don't know if we, if he can make it. But uh, it's rare that you come out of the situation as a better person. It's very rare. It's very. We'd rare. like to hope so, but we don't know. We don't know. We have hope. Yes. <laughs> Amazing note to end this uh, yes. this interview. Thank you so much for being thank here. Thank you. Thank you very if much. If anyone has any any questions, and it, if not, it was a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. It was a pleasure for me too. So, we continue our discussion with uh, the filmmaker of the Bayer Square. Yes. Can you tell us more about yourself, please? Uh, yes. Uh, actually, it's, uh, it is my first film. Mm -hmm. uh, it is uh, a student film, a documentary that mm -hmm. I did for, for my school. Um, it's about uh, reconstruction of a square. Mm -hmm. uh, the Navarian Square, that is uh, a place uh, really near my my family house where I grew up, um, and uh, well, I used to play there as as a kid. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I came back to to the city where I live, and like I saw all these uh, big differences in uh, in the city, where it struck with me this idea that. Um, the changes of the public space that we have uh, a connection with them. Uh, somehow it affects also our inner selves and uh, yeah, I wanted to, to make a film about, uh, about this feeling. 
uh, and the process of maybe, well, the impact of time on, mm -hmm. on our lives. Like, um, the, I, I try to examine like the connection of who I once was and which is like the similarities with uh, me now. And do you think the, the, the square, because I read a lot about it and it has a very rich history in, I mean, a historical plan, it's also an important place. But for you personally, yes, it's a symbol of what? Yes. Uh, well, the historical aspect is actually uh, something different. Yes, uh, yes. There's a small part in the film that... Uh, where it shows my point of view on, on the subject because, well, it's really near the, the ruins of a palaster uh, mm -hmm. next to the square. And, uh, like, I want to say something about uh, what we keep um, from the past, like, what uh, do we pay tribute to? Uh, it has something to do with... Uh, like, I don't know, the power and uh, the class differences, yeah. Class differences? And yes, uh, well, the people that I'm more uh, into about uh, the people that uh, they, are lost, they are lost in history. And, I don't know, we don't learn about them. But yeah. do you see the reconstruction of the square as... Uh, so it's mostly negative, in a negative way, because well, these... History. It's, These people uh, are there. It's not. Lost. It's not uh, really negative. It's. Uh, it's what life is about. It's. Uh, I see the the evolution in time, like when the reconstruction changes the all the the places that I was remembering, and well, it's the yeah this evolution of. Time and the impact that it has uh, in our lives. I don't know. It's not negative, but it's well. It has a melancholy or a nostalgia about it. Nostalgic, yeah. nostalgic, a bit sad. Not, not negative yes, in yes. The, the way. But um, maybe it's a, it's about change in the end. It's about, it's about how everything is changing and yes, everything is changing and uh, I I don't know. It's about questions like. I don't know who I am or uh, mm -hmm. who I once was, yes. When, when you were little and <laughs> yes, going yes, there, yes. because it's obviously a very special place for you yes. growing up. Yes. Um, and you associate them may maybe with your childhood memories and, and everything. Uh, exactly. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, I think there's also one point that uh, there is something uh, collective about this place. Like, it's not... So, uh, well, at some point, it's, it's personal also, but it's uh, for a lot of people. Yeah, like the that, Yeah, yeah, that they grew up there. Uh, they have these uh, collective memories mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. stuff. And, yeah, I think that maybe there are other people that uh, they have the same feeling about it. Yeah, it's, it's the center of the, of yeah. the town. But uh, I wanted to ask you about your choice with the music. There is, there is no music, only dialogue. Yes. And we can hear the, the machines. Yes. Um, why, why this was your choice? Uh, well, it doesn't have music, but uh, in all the film there is uh, some, uh, I don't know, abstract uh, background. Uh, m not music, but okay. Uh, that has, I, I think that it creates uh, an atmosphere of maybe, I don't know. It, uh, maybe the noise of the city? Yeah, yeah, it's about the reality, how you view the reality. Uh, well, yeah, what, what was the second part of the question? <laughs> ah, about the dialogue, yes. Well, I couldn't. There is no dialogue because um, I don't. Well, there is a monologue. Mm -hmm. The film is a monologue, actually, uh, because I don't concentrate in uh, any uh, people or 
that kind of stuff. I just concentrate on the square, not only the reconstruction, but also the kids that they are playing. This is also a big part because maybe my memory is fading away, but there are some kids that they are now building their memories in the new playground. And uh, yeah, so there couldn't be any dialogue of it. <laughs> and you, you, you talked about uh, that it's, uh, there is an impact on the, on the place, but also on the people. And uh, do you think you will continue after graduating with more projects that are related to, to your city or maybe in this topic? Or do you think of doing something else? Yeah, uh, actually, I'm I'm in the process of uh, editing now two more films for my school. I think that uh, there is the graduation film and another one. I think maybe in September I'll be finished with that. Uh, and the one there is also a short documentary that is like about. Uh, the ultras uh, violence that uh, there is a very big issue nowadays in our city and uh, like in the last uh, five years we've lost uh, three young uh, men from this violence and yeah I think that it's it's something uh, really big now uh, so uh, this is uh, about uh, the connection with the city I mean it's a different kind of story, but... No, it's still related to community values yes, yes, and, and relationship way. between yes. people. Uh, so it's a, there it's is also to... no dialogue also. I don't know if something, this means something, but yeah. It's common, okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and something, you said that's the graduation film? Yeah, no, no, this is the other, and uh, I, I made also my graduation film. Okay. Is, uh, is a more experimental film uh, about uh, this uh, the silent state of a house during uh, the absence of, of humans. Okay. So it's a film about silence. About silence. Yes. So again, no music. <laughs> no, no, no music. <laughs> yes, there is a pattern. Yeah, there is there's a pattern. I yes. truly see it, yes. <laughs> so. Pleasure talking with you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Thank I wish you, so you luck much. with all yes, your yes. future pro projects. And I hope to see you here next year, right? Well, Maybe. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.